wanted to work through an example of relativistic energy. Uh, this is a, an example that involves a subatomic particle, and we're going to figure out its um, rest energy, its kinetic energy, its total energy. In this particular example, uh, we have a subatomic particle, the proton, and we're told that the uh, proton is traveling at a speed that's 90, 95% of the speed of light. And we're going to be asked to calculate the kinetic energy, the total energy, and the rest energy of this particle. So in order to calculate the rest energy, the total energy, and the kinetic energy, there's a couple of quantities that I need to know. One of them is probably the obvious one. They need to know the mass of a proton. So I'm going to write down the mass of the proton. And then the other one is that I'm going to need to know the Lorentz factor corresponding to this speed. There's 95% of the speed of light. So I'm actually going to write down or calculate those things first. And then we'll get on with the actual problem of calculating rest, total, and kinetic energy. So firstly, the mass of the proton. The mass of the proton that we're probably more familiar with is the mass in kilograms, is 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, tiny number. But that's actually not very handy, not very convenient for this problem. A better unit for mass in this problem is not kilograms, but one that sounds more complicated than kilograms. It's, um, it's electron volts over C squared. So the mass of a proton is 938.3 million or mega electron volts of a C squared. And these are the units that we're going to use for mass in this problem. And you'll see how much easier, how much handier it is to work in these sort of subatomic units of MeV of a C squared rather than these uh, everyday units of kilograms. As I mentioned, the other quantity that we need is the Lorentz factor for our proton. Uh, if you know the speed of your particle or your proton, then it's not too hard to calculate the Lorentz factor that corresponds to that speed. It's through this little expression here. So it's um, one over the square root of this quantity, one minus V over C squared. Calculate one minus V over C squared, then take the square root, then invert it. That's going to be your gamma factor. So let's go ahead and do that. We can do that because we know the speed is 95%, 0.95, the speed of light. And so all I've got to do is replace this V over C inside the parentheses with 0.95 squared, and then subtract that from one, uh, take the square root and take the inverse. And I've already, of course, because I'm well prepared, gone ahead and done that. And the number that I got for the Lorentz factor was 3.2. And so these are the two qualities that uh, I'm either reminding myself of in the case of mass or I'm calculating in the case of the gamma factor that I know I'm going to need in this problem. So let's go on and calculate the rest energy. So I call it RE, but R for rest energy. And actually this one, we just need the mass of the proton. We don't need the gamma factor yet. So here's the mass of the proton, M subscript P uh, times C squared. This is Einstein's famous equation that um, energy is equal to uh, MC squared. Uh, it means that the um, mass of a proton is equivalent to some energy associated with that mass, some energy we call the rest energy. So all I've got to do is substitute in the mass of the proton, 938.3 MeV over C squared, mega electron volts over C squared, then multiply that by C squared. I'm not going to put in the number in meters per second for C squared. I'm just going to write down C squared and then notice that the C squared in the numerator cancels with the C squared in the denominator and I'm just left with a 938.3 MeV 
and that's the rest energy of the proton. Electron volts, mega electron volts are an energy unit, just like joules are an everyday energy unit. These are a subatomic particle energy unit. Next, next part of the question. Next part of the question is calculate the total energy. Well, the equation for the total energy is not as famous as mc squared, but it's um, as important, I think, as mc squared. It's uh, mc squared times gamma, the Lorentz factor. It's as simple as that, straightforward as that. So all we got to do is multiply our our rest energy, 938.3 MeV, which is the uh, mc squared here, by the gamma factor. So let's go ahead and do that. 3.2 times 938.3 MeV. And I've already, of course, worked that out somewhere. 3,000 and um, 2.6. MeV. So it's just simply 3.2 times this number of 938. You can see it's good, roughly 3,000 because it's roughly three times roughly a thousand. So that's the total energy. Uh, the kinetic energy. What about the kinetic energy? So the total energy involves is a sum of both the, the rest energy and the kinetic energy. So we could calculate the kinetic energy if we knew the total energy and we knew the rest energy, it's just the difference between the two. Because the, um, the kinetic energy and the rest energy must add up to the total energy. Or there's also a formula. We could calculate it with this even less well-known, I think, formula. That is MC, mc squared times gamma minus one, the Lorentz factor less one. So you could use either of these equations. I'll, I'll use the latter. So gamma minus one, gamma was 3.2, gamma minus one is 2.2. Just got to multiply that by 938 MeV. And I've already calculated this ahead of time also. It's uh, 2064 MeV. And so these are uh, three different types of energy. Uh, one, is associated with the uh, mass of the particle, the proton, rest energy. The other is associated with the motion of the particle, the kinetic energy. And the total energy is just a sum of those two contributions. And if you were to add these numbers up, the 938 plus the uh, 2064, you should get the 3002, and I think you do. Anyway. That was an example of a relativistic particle, uh, an example of a highly relativistic particle, 95% of the speed of light. We looked at its uh, rest energy, its kinetic energy, and its total energy, and how to calculate those different forms of energy.